I'd like to do a little meditation today on some of the bread and butter of non-dual processing, which is, who am I? Mata Maharshi's uh, little tiny pamphlet you can download for free on the internet uh, goes through this in some about all detail you need, in not very many pages. This is the kind of thing we're going to look at in this little meditation, who am I, and some other parts of who am I, to try to understand what this I, ego, is, and uh, how it functions. So again, long, calm, slow breath, getting comfortable in your body. If you can get your shoulders over your hips, it's great. Relax. Feel your breath getting long and slow. If soft Buddha eyes help you, that's fine. Or you can close them. Just don't have them wide open. You get distracted. Just always be present with your breath. Be very conscious of it, perhaps feeling it across the tip of the tip of the nose. Passing the throat, going into the lung, feeling the intercostals moving, perhaps the diaphragm. Just be very present for the intricacies and complexities of this breathing process and realize that, in fact, you have no idea how it happens. You watch it. You can seemingly change it, alter it. But the intricacies of the interconnections between those elements, we have no clue, personally, how we do those things. They just happen. Now, feeling your breath, doing your exhale, which we gravitate to. Feel yourself letting go in that exhale. And as the inhale comes again, feel the rise of this sensation of an eye. Now on the exhale, feel the letting go of this concept, this construct. This I, as we know, has come into being, we believe, something like 75, 80,000 years ago, maybe 100,000 years ago. We broke off from the chimpanzees six, seven million years ago. This is a relatively recent construct. Something we developed because we need to talk to each other about where to plant the grain and how to share and work together. The question now is, is this construct still useful in the same way? As you watch your breath move in and out, up and down, back and forth, recognize that there is something that is sitting there watching this. Something that is present for the sensations arising. Thoughts arising, emotions arising, breath arising and passing away. Just feel the movement across consciousness of these various occurrences. Watch for the arising of thought, sensation. See if you can get to the very front end of thought, breath, sensation, emotion. And watch them pass away. Importantly, realize that there is something, there is this I, seemingly, that is watching all of this take place out there. We've used the metaphor of a stream before. Out there in the stream, all this flows by. With this eye sits there on the bank. Looking at this eye, perhaps we can investigate it through just looking at a common sentence in which the eye is used. A sentence like, I am Mary, and I live in Poughkeepsie. And I'm a dancer. You begin to 
feel the sense of that, plug in, of course, your own parameters. You take that long sentence, you cut it down to, I am Mary and I live in Poughkeepsie. Feel how that feels different from the longer sentence. You've lost this identity of being a dancer. I am Mary and I live in Poughkeepsie. And then feel yourself reducing that further into I am Mary. Feel how that feels, how different. Perhaps go back to the original sentence, I am Mary, I live in Poughkeepsie and I'm a dancer. And then feel it with I am Mary. See how different those feel. And then go the step further and say just I am. Feel the difference between I am Mary and I am. I am Fred. I am Nancy. I'm Joan. I am. Feel how different those feel. Which are you? Are you this I am? Feel how it feels? Or are you I am Mary? Which feels more true to who you are? Who are you? This Mary thing we talk about. What is this Mary? Try to hold that name, your name, how people will call you. Just feel that name. As you repeat that name for yourself, just try it over and over again. Just see as you say your own name to yourself, what happens? Try to feel yourself as your name at age 10. What does your name and age 10 bring forth? What images, what stories arise? And feel yourself, your name, at age 20. Feel how different that feels from 10. What are the stories, the images that come forth when you consider yourself at age 20? Or if you're younger than that, take your current age. Just abide, be with, present with that, your name and 20. Feel the stories that arise and ask yourself, are these useful anymore? These constitute in my memory bank some part of the memory, some, car, some part of the identity that I am. Do these storylines have any meaning, these storylines from age 10 or 20 or 5? Is there any point in keeping these storylines around? You only keep them because you believe they have protective value. Could you just let go of them? Maybe how you were as a 5-year-old has no bearing upon how you are now 
in your current age. Feel yourself changing. Feel yourself as you are now in your body and imagine yourself 50 pounds heavier. How do you feel being 50 pounds heavier? And how would you feel being 10 pounds lighter? What if you were four inches taller? How would you feel? Or four inches shorter? How would you feel? Feel how you would feel if your skin color changed significantly. Be present for that. And then imagine yourself having lived in a different country. One that you never lived in before. How would you feel? What does it mean to be your name? With your conditioning? the nature of your physical presence, your skin color, age, where you were from. What is real in all of this, these many changes? What is this Mary? What does it mean? Mary changes across time. As we change appearances, Mary changes. Is there anything here that is constant? Who am I? Really, who am I in all of this changing possibility? Is there anything here that is constant? That doesn't change as you change weight, height, country of origin, skin color. Is there anything there that is untouched by that? What does it mean to be Mary? As you meet different people in the course of a day, if you watch carefully, you will see that a different Mary shows up for each meeting. Mary talks to one person, a Mary shows up. Two other people join the discussion, Mary changes. People leave and someone else comes up. Mary changes again. What does it mean to be this name? Just a dancing phenomena. Dancing across time, characteristics, relationships. Constantly changing. What is unchanging in all of these changes? Can you identify with the unchanging rather than the changing? Who are you really? Oh, oh, oh,
namidam purnat purnamudachate onasya purnamadaya purnam eva vashishate Om. Thank you.